Hey friends, welcome back. I am so glad that you are here with me today. Now we are learning this month that Jesus rescues us. What do you say? Yay, Jesus. So every time when I say Jesus rescues us, I want you to shout, yay, Jesus. I hope you're doing it there at home. All right, guys. So we started last week learning a little bit about Jesus and how he came to earth and that he was the promise. But before we jump into that today, for our opening activity, we are going to make something that we need and we're going to use during our lesson. Oh, maybe you notice? Yeah, we are going to make some paper boats. Now, if you got a box, you may have had some instructions of how to do it. Um, I'm gonna make one now so you can follow along with me. Or if you're like, this pan is too complicated, you can pull up a video on YouTube and watch it step by step. Or maybe you're like, I, I, can't, I can't fold a paper, a, a boat out of paper. So that's okay. Find something that's like a boat. Maybe you have a toy boat in your house. Maybe you have something that you can make into a boat. Get creative, but you're gonna need to have some kind of boat for our lesson today. Now, if you've never folded a paper boat before, it's so fun. I do this if I have any random paper or even with like my gum wrapper, I'll fold it into a boat. I love to have my hands busy, so I love to fold paper. Now, I, I don't do any kind of elaborate origami things, but a boat, I can do. So, you can take any color paper that you want. You just want a regular kind of plain copy paper. You don't want it super thick and hard to fold because we're gonna do lots of folding. So take your paper and you're gonna look how tall it is and you're gonna go from top to bottom. So I'm gonna lay it flat so I can line up my corners. Oop, got a little crooked there. It's okay. Oh, I'll show you that. All right, so you see that? So I took my paper and I folded it down, okay? Now, we're gonna have the folded part at the top and then we're gonna fold it in half across. Okay, and we're gonna open that back up. That middle line's kind of like our marker and we're gonna take each corner and we're gonna bring it down kind of like a paper airplane. You're gonna fold it to the middle. I guess on one side, and then I'll get the other one. So you have both sides down and center like that. So you've got kind of a triangle going on here, like the start of a paper airplane. Now, you're gonna take these bottom two pieces. There's two sides there. You're gonna fold one one way. Oh, mine are stuck together, so I get this. One way, so I'm gonna fold the front one up, and I'm gonna fold the other one to the back, just like that. Now, right here, you already, you've got a little hat. You could wear that, it'd be sick, so cool. Yes, just like that. But we wanna make it into a boat, so we're gonna go a little bit further. So now you're gonna take your two ends, you're gonna push them together. I know, this is where it starts getting a little complicated. Feel free to get some help um, from mom or dad or brother and sister, or if you're like, I can't figure this out, next time you see me, ask me, I will fold you a boat. All right, so now we folded this flat here. We've got this square. Now we're gonna take both sides and we're gonna fold it up. It's gonna kind of look like that. So fold this one up. And then I'm gonna fold the other side up. Okay, now this, I'm gonna break the table. This is where it gets a little tough. So then I'm, now that I fold those two sides up, I'm gonna pull them and push the sides in. Ugh! And sometimes your paper comes apart and it's okay. See, you miss him. I practice in all these boats and it still comes apart. Still it comes apart. We can just fold this in here like that. And fold it. Feel free to get some help with that. Yep, a little crooked, but guess what? It's still gonna work. These don't actually fit float. And the little wonk. There we go. Ta-da! Now we have our paper boat. Now I don't know if any of you guys have ever been on a boat before, but there really can be a lot of fun, especially when you're out in the deep water and you kind of, when you're in a boat and you kind of feel, it makes you feel safe and that you're just swimming around. You've got a boat and some different things. But if you've ever been on a boat and there's been this really bad storm and there's lots of rock and you're going up and down, it can be super scary where you don't feel safe because there's these huge waves and this wind. It can be super, super scary. Well, we're gonna see today that Jesus rescues us. Yay, Jesus. And that Jesus rescues us no matter what is going on around us. Now, but in our story today, we are going to have a boat and be some water. So before we get into it, go ahead and stand on up and let's sing some songs and worship God together. Please. 
I didn't know it would be this hard I didn't think I could fall so far But here I am How did I stray so far off course? How can I get back to the shore? Lord, here I am And the waves are crashing all around I need you, God, and I need you All right, friends, last week I told you that we were going to make a jump from the Old Testament moving into the New Testament. So we've been kind of focusing and learning about God's people, the Israelites, and we mainly learn about them from the beginning of the Bible in the Old Testament. And remember back in the Old Testament, when Adam and Eve sinned, God made a promise that he was going to send a rescuer. God made a promise to Abraham that through Abraham's family, the world would be blessed and that he would send that rescuer. And he made this promise. He reminded the Israelite people, I will be with you and I will, you are my people and I'm going through you, I'm going to send a rescuer. So we see this promise all through the Old Testament. Well, now we're in the New Testament. So this is many, 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 many hundreds and thousands of years after the Israelite people that, we, that had just left Egypt. We're gonna go back to them, learn about them a little bit more next month, but we're, we're way ahead now where we're seeing that. Jesus is born. Now remember the Israelite people, these people that believed in God, they knew that God was going to rescue them. And they were waiting and praying and expecting, and maybe they were expecting a superhero. Kind of talked about last week. So they're waiting for this superhero that's going to come, is going to rescue them from all the bad that's in the world, from their sin. Or, you know, during that time, they were under the control of the Roman Empire. So the Romans told them what to do. They made their rules. They had to pay taxes to the Romans. So maybe they were expecting that that rescuer, that promise that God sent, was going to be like a very intense, really awesome Roman a general or an army. Was, he's going to come and lead his army and defeat the Romans. And that's how they'd be rescued. 
Well, God's plan was different. We saw that last week that God's plan was to send his son, Jesus. Now, God's plan was good and it's always perfect and his plans are so much better than ours. But he did it in an unexpected way. He sent his son to come as a baby and he wasn't born in a palace as he should have been, as you know, as he deserved, but he was just born just with his mom and dad, simple parents in Mary and Joseph in this stable. The only people there to, rest, to greet him and welcome him were, were the shepherds. But that's God's plan and God rescues us. He, Jesus rescues us in unexpected ways. Now our Bible story today comes, it's in the New Testament, comes from the book of Mark. Now a really cool thing about the New Testament, um, the first four books of the Bible, we call these the Gospels. Now we've talked about the Gospel, that's the good news, what Jesus did. Because these four first books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are all books talking about the time when Jesus was here on earth. Now it talks about his birth, it talks about the time that he spent traveling around teaching and healing people and preaching and pointing people to God. It also talks about his crucifixion where he died. He fulfilled God's plan, but that he rose again. So we see all that. And so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these are written by men, these disciples who were with Jesus and saw these things happen. And we're going to be in the book of Mark. So the third book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, sorry, second, I can count, Mark, Matthew, Mark, and then we have Luke and John. Now, a lot of times when we're reading a story in one of these gospels, you may look at that and be like, oh, I thought I read that same story in Matthew, or I read that same story in Luke. Yeah, a lot of times, guys, because these are all written by disciples who saw the same events, that we have the same event, the same story, repeated in different things. We call this parallel. So there's a parallel passage. So we're going to read in Mark today, but you could also read about the same thing in Matthew as well as in Luke. So it's kind of cool. So you can read it and see different perspectives on the same event. We have during this time, so Jesus, he's not a baby anymore. He's grown up. He's a man. He is traveling around. We call this his earthly ministry. This is what he's doing for three years. He's traveling around, teaching, preaching, healing people, and people are amazed at what he has to say. They're flocking to him. Everywhere he goes, there are multitudes, like lots and lots of people who are there because they want to see him. They want to hear him. They want to be healed by him. And so it's really, really exciting stuff. So now we're in the book of Mark, chapter 4, and Jesus has been with his disciples teaching a crowd and a group and preaching. And so now he says, okay, now it's time. We're going to go across the sea. So he's been teaching next to the Sea of Galilee. And so he says, okay, on that day when evening had come, so it's late evening, he said to them, talking to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. So let's just go across while we get to the other side. Maybe we'll find some food over there, do something like, like let's, let's travel a little bit more. And leaving the crowds, they left the crowd. They took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boots were with them. So they said, okay. So the disciples, they get in the boat. Jesus comes with them. Now, several of these disciples have actually, before they were with Jesus, they had actually, their job was to be fishermen. So they're used to boats. They're used to water. So they, they know what they're doing. You know, they got the boat out and the sail's going. So they're just going along, crossing the sea. They get out there. And then all of a sudden, okay, so they got their boat going. So as we're doing this, I want you to do this with me. So get your, get your boats out ready. I said, they're just going along. They're kind of across the other side. This is what happens. And, and a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. Okay, so I want you to just take your boat and I want you to have the craziest storms going on. It's going up and down the waves and it's going side to side. Oh, maybe it's going there. I want you to go, go crazy. Say, this is a crazy storm. It's really scary. There's wind going. It is just, their boat is rocking. They are not feeling safe right now. The disciples were freaking out. They were so scared. They're like, oh. They knew how to handle a boat, but this was a really, really bad storm. They were afraid that they were going to die. It was so bad. The water was filling up the boat. It, the waves were crashing over it. So maybe it was even starting to sink a little bit and it's going crazy. So they go, and this is what Jesus is doing. Okay. So the disciples are trying not to die. They're terrified of what's going on. And then they look and they realize, well, where's Jesus? Where's he? <laughs> this is great. But he was in, Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So they're like, Jesus, how can you take a nap at a time like this? Wake up, wake up. We are going to die. Do you not realize? So they were terrified and scared. But Jesus was just napping. He wasn't worried about it. 
You guys are going to see Jesus rescues us. He does it in some amazing ways. He does it because he's powerful. Look at what he happens. And he awoke and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. All right, so the boat's going. It's crazy, crazy storm. Jesus says, peace, be still. And nothing. The wind stopped. The waves stopped. All was calm. Jesus said to them, he said, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So they saw this and they said, wow, man, what just happened? That, that's amazing. This is a miracle. They, and they said they were filled with, with great fear. So they were, they were like this awe, like, whoa, it's amazing. Who is this? This, this, this Jesus, he's not just a regular man. He is God himself. Even the wind and the sea obey him. Guys, Jesus rescues us. And he can do that because he is God. And he does it through God's power. And guys, we're going to see that no matter what we're facing, it may not be a literal storm like the disciples in the boat going crazy, but any hard things in life, Jesus promises to be with us. And we know that Jesus rescues us. Yay, Jesus. So no matter what we're doing, what we're facing, good, bad, scary, talk to Jesus about it and know that he promises to be with us and he promises to rescue us. And guys, we're going to get to learn even more about how Jesus rescues us next week. All right, friends, let's practice our Bible verse together. I hope you had some fun painting it last week and then put it in a place where you could see it every single day and you can look over it. So let's say it's together. He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, Titus 3, 5. All right, let's watch our Bible Buddy video and then we will practice our verse together. Hey kids, what's up? I'm guac and I'm an iguana. I'm green like guacamole. That's why my friends call me guac. And I eat a lot of green food. I'm an herbivore. That means I like to eat leaves and other plants. Do you eat green food too? I hear it's totally good for you too. Mm -mm. Leaves, flowers, and fruit Give me the energy I need to spend my day swimming and tree hopping. Sometimes when I'm high up in the treetops, I watch you humans out riding the waves in the ocean. Cowabunga, dude! Surf's up! Sometimes I see people totally wipe out. Whoa! I'm glad there are lifeguards around to rescue people if they need some help. Speaking of rescuing, the Bible tells about a time Jesus rescued his friends when the waves were crashing hardcore. Jesus and his friends were on a boat. Jesus was super sleepy, so he decided to take a nap. But then it got epically windy and stormy. Jesus' friends thought they were goners, but Jesus wasn't worried a bit. Jesus told the wind, be still, and the storm stopped. All was calm. Jesus rescued his friends that day, and he rescues us too. Jesus is powerful, and he's always there to help us, even when we don't deserve it. In the Bible, book of Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. You don't have to be perfect, and you don't have to try and earn Jesus' love. Jesus' love is strong. He loves you just for being you. And he made a way for you to be his friend forever. You got a friend in Jesus when you worry or totally wipe out. He's got the power to bring you peace. Ah, Jesus loves you and your friends too. Totally. Jesus rescues us. Okay guys, so today and this week, we are just gonna be practicing saying the verse. Since it's really new to us, and it's a little bit long, 
repetition or repeating it and practicing it is the best way for us to remember it. So let's say it again together. Here we go. He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Titus 3, 5. Now, sometimes when you're saying the same thing over and over again, it can get kind of, kind of boring. You're like, okay, kind of repetitive. So we're going to make it a little bit more exciting. So I want you this week to practice saying this in different voices. So maybe you can say it real deep. He saved us. Maybe I like got high pitch. He saved us. If you want to get, have some real fun, I found this app on my phone. It's this voice changer, and it's cracking me up, guys. So I gotta tell you. So I said the verse. He said, it. and now you can change and have different voices. Here is the helium one. Are you ready for this? It's great. You have funny voices. Let's see. We've got the robot. Let's see what this one sounds like. He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Titus 3, 5. Ooh, look how crazy. And I think my favorite one down here, let's see, we've got, where is it? A, the chipmunk. All right, y'all ready for this one? He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Titus 3, 5. <laughs> anyway, so it's a fun app. You Maybe you can find some different things. If you don't have a tablet or a phone, you can do that. Maybe borrow it for your moms and dads, or just practice saying it in some funny voices. So this week, Practice it, have some fun, just say the verse over and over again. And guys, remember that Jesus rescues us. Yay, Jesus. Bye, friends. I'll see you next week.